was a power that was over all demonic powers. No matter what they had done, no matter what entrapment the people were in, when the kingdom came, something had to take place and the kingdom of darkness that was ruling could no longer rule. Hallelujah. Praise God. to verses 14 and 15. I'll read the first one if we, we will together read the other one. Verse 15. <clears throat> Verse 14. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the and kingdom, kingdom of, of God, God is at hand. hand. Repent, Repent ye and believe and the, the gospel. gospel. Praise the Lord. Let us pray together. If you can join hands with someone, we would appreciate it. <clears throat> thank you, Lord. Precious Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day that you've made. We thank you for your love, for your Holy Spirit, for your grace that you've given unto us at this time. And we thank you for, Lord, the ministry of the word, and we ask for the help that comes from you. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your spirit. We acknowledge, O oh God, your word. And we realize, O oh God, that we need your help again. Thank you for that which has transpired thus far. And Lord, continue now. Minister to us through your word. Lord, and we ask that uh, the accompanying of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, ministry will go for further. And Lord, touch our lives. Change us for your glory. Have free course in the name of Jesus Christ. And let your Holy Spirit, Lord God, guide and minister to hearts and encourage people's lives and build and strengthen us, Lord God. But we need your help. We need your strength, Lord God. We need the illumination that comes from God, Lord God, the, the, the inspiration of the Almighty. We thank you, Father, in these turbulent times that we're living in, Lord God. Strengthen the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Here in the gospel according to Mark, we have a passage that's quite, we all are quite familiar with. When Jesus uh, began his ministry, uh, his Galilean ministry and the Bible says um, it was after John the um, prophet John 
had been put into prison. And I remember John saying in the word of God, he must increase and I must decrease. John's ministry basically had come to an end. That which he, his role was forerunner and he had heralded or announced the coming of Christ. And he was to prepare the way uh, before Christ came and uh, he did that quite well and after his tenure here on earth was pretty much done or his ministry come to a conclusion and then uh, the Bible says Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand repent ye and believe the gospel so to say the time is at hand or the time is fulfilled and, and the kingdom is at hand, it was actually telling the people that that which was priority for the people was the focusing in on the kingdom of God. And we can still say the same thing, that this is still priority, the gospel of the kingdom. And the kingdom of God is the rule of God, the rule of God, God ruling in the earth. And the gospel is good news. So Jesus, as he began his Galilean ministry, he began to preach the good news of the kingdom of God. And it was good news because uh, they had come from or come through a time of nearly 400 years, uh, like uh, dark days, because at uh, the time there was no open vision and the word of God was very precious. So it was almost like Israel went through a period, uh, the prophets were no longer on the scene, and all that which was very dear to Israel, uh, they didn't have that blessedness anymore. So you can imagine, after that many years, there should have been a longing for the old past, or a longing for that which God did during the days of uh, David and Moses and Abraham and the prophets. And, you know, I, I, I can just uh, imagine... It was designed for several purposes, but one obviously was that Israel would realize that without God, they really would not experience the blessedness that they did before. And so John the Baptist came to begin to prepare the way for God, for Christ. And as he finished his course and was put in prison, Jesus came on the scene and he began to say the kingdom of heaven is at hand or the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent now and believe the good news. And I just want to talk a little today about the kingdom of God, the good news of God. And there's a lot of things that uh, we do preach trying to declare the whole of the counsel of God. Um, but the kingdom of God perhaps should be preached a bit more than it is. And God, Jesus told his followers, his disciples, that they were to preach the kingdom of God because uh, it was introduced by Jesus. And as it was introduced by Jesus Christ, this kingdom was to continue. And when you think in terms of ruling, the rule and reign of God, it was a bit different from the earthly kingdoms, but it was similar in this respect that the words that were synonymous to this, uh, to this kingdom was power, dominion, and reign, and ruling, and kingship. So uh, this kingdom was at hand. Satan's kingdom had been ruling for quite a while. And as you walk through the pages of the Gospels, you see how much the kingdom of Satan was ruling and reigning. There was so much sickness, so many various, oh, so various diseases, and 
People were in a lot of distress and pain, tortured by demonic powers. And uh, they were not really following God. They longed for God. They had at a time what was known as the pool uh, of Bethesda, where the people could come at uh, ever so often. And the first person that would step into that pool after an angel would come down at a certain time and trouble the water, they would get healed instantly. And that was, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's just like God, that even in dark times, he never left his children without some form of light. And there was that hope that somebody could constantly be healed, depending on how often the angel would come down and trouble the waters. And... <clears throat> <clears throat> it was, it's amazing <clears throat> that God is a compassionate and merciful God. Uh, although the Messiah really it wasn't his time, uh, still this pool was there. And if a person was fast enough in his condition, or if his condition didn't restrict him to the point that he was uh, immobile, there was an opportunity for him to get healed if he could get into the water fast enough, faster than someone else. And you all remember the story. There was one that he came by the pool and he could do nothing but just lay there. And, um, and I can imagine it was pretty hopeless for him. And <clears throat> so when Jesus came to begin to, uh, after he announced the arrival of the kingdom, uh, one of the first things he did was went and uh, Chosen, chose disciples to witness the things that the kingdom was going to uh, do, be doing through him. And he chose his disciples, and then one of the next things that he did was went into the synagogue. And as we see him in the synagogue on the Sabbath day, he began to announce this kingdom, the good news of the kingdom, and it was different this time because... As he announced this good news of the kingdom, there was a disturbance. Uh, there was a man there, no doubt that he had been in the kingdom for a while, or been, I'm sorry, been in the uh, synagogue for a while, but none of the things that happened prior to that uh, bothered him, obviously. But when Jesus came preaching with power and authority, uh, the demon that was in the man couldn't take it, so he began to uh, trouble the man and spoke through the man and began to, uh, ask him to leave him alone and so Jesus began to speak to him hold your peace and come out of the man and instantly the man uh, the demon came out of the man and there was uh, uh, a performance of the power of God or the demonstration of this powerful kingdom so the disciples and the people that were there were in for a treat because he began to introduce the power and the dynamism of this kingdom. And right away he began to show that this kingdom power was a power that was over all demonic powers. No matter what they had done, no matter what entrapment the people were in, when the kingdom came, something had to take place and the kingdom of darkness that was ruling could no longer rule hallelujah praise God and so Jesus admonished his disciples that they should proclaim the good news of the kingdom and every time they would announce the kingdom of God then God would be with them and he would manifest the power of this kingdom and it is as you go through the pages of the gospel it's, it is so wonderful to see uh, the power of this kingdom and the Bible. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit from Matthew's uh, chapter four. And I want you to turn there briefly with me and you can get an idea as to what we're talking about. <clears throat> Matthew chapter four, beginning at verse 23. Now he starts his Galilean ministry. And as he goes through the towns and uh, uh, the towns there, in Galilee and begin to proclaim in the synagogue the, the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom. Verse 23 says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness 
and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people that were taken with divers or various diseases and torments or pain, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, moonstruck, epileptic, seizures, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. So I want you to try and picture or image this what was taking place. Here the man called Jesus came into the towns of Galilee, and he began to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. And as he began to talk about uh, the good news, God's kingdom had arrived. And uh, then he began to demonstrate through uh, the power of the Holy Spirit healing and working miracles among the people so much so that every known then known disease was healed and cured and so he named a few and those that were uh, whose bodies were racked and tortured with pain then he healed them there were demonic powers that had been ruling in bodies ruling in the mind ruling ruling in the lives of people had to leave they had to give up ship because of the power of the kingdom of god hallelujah hallelujah and i'm so glad for the kingdom of god and so jesus comes and tells them he said repent now for the kingdom of god is at hand no matter what was going on in the community no matter what was going on in the cities uh, prior to that he was saying this is at hand this is the important thing right now and so as he began to demonstrate that wonderful power people began to have hope like they never had for all the days of their lives nor the days of their forefathers and you can just imagine what kind of hope he brought when all the incurable diseases Jesus met by his dynamic power he broke generational curses he broke the curses of the ancestor he loosed the bands of wickedness he began to let the oppressed go free and he drove out demonic powers like never before people didn't know what to think that this man of God this son of God came on the scene to demonstrate God's dynamic power God visited his people God visited Israel like never before through Jesus Christ our Lord and, and Jesus told his disciples I want you to go do the same thing I want you to go and proclaim the good news of the kingdom and he gives us that mandate the same thing he commissions us to do the same thing you can preach a lot of things <clears throat> but when you begin to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God does something dynamic begin to take place because God introduces the power of this mighty kingdom hallelujah people's lives are changed in the Bible <clears throat> something about the kingdom of God it was dynamic because people could not manufacture such a thing and they could talk about it they could wish pray for it but they could not produce the fruit of that marvelous kingdom it was dynamic in itself but there's something else about the kingdom that I think would interest you and I. This kingdom was soteriological. It means it's, uh, a soteriolo uh, soteriology is the study of salvation. This kingdom brought salvation to man. This kingdom was so powerful that when people saw the works of Jesus Christ, they had hope like they never had before. The dead were raised, the demons were cast out, the blind eyes were opened, the lame began to walk, the dumb began to talk, miracles were happening, hallelujah. Every kind of condition that took place, Jesus Christ did it. And I heard the word of God that said Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He says, I I am the Lord and I change not that same Jesus I've got some good news for you I want to bring some hope to you today your situation is not too bad your physical body is not too depleted that Jesus can't visit you when Jesus visits your body when Jesus visits your soul when Jesus visits you something is going to happen something miraculous something cataclysmic something hallelujah so great is going to take place because Jesus Christ is the one that spoke this world into existence Jesus Christ is the one that made this world and he's the one that upholds everything right now by the world of his dynamic power and he can change things he can work a creative miracle in your situation 
He's able. He's able. I want to raise the faith of God's people by telling you that Jesus Christ is not dead. He's alive forevermore. I heard Jesus tell one man, he said, Behold, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I've got the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And Jesus Christ, he presents himself as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says Satan goes about as a roaring lion he's only a counterfeit hallelujah he's on only a falsehood but the bible says that jesus is a lion of the tribe of judah and he breaks chain one roar from the voice of god one roar from the lion of judah christ will steal your circumstance will steal your situation hallelujah he can bring peace like no one else can he's the one to do it hallelujah and this mighty kingdom is the reign and the rule of god this mighty kingdom as jesus walked the shores of galilee he did so many things he went into the backward areas and this places where people look like they were forgotten hallelujah and he came and he brought light the people that sat in darkness they saw a great light because jesus came and jesus christ is the light of the world and his kingdom is real his kingdom is prevalent his kingdom rules over all and i got news for you he want to release you and i he want to release you and i with the word of the kingdom so when you are released with this word of the kingdom as you announce the arrival of the kingdom of god something is going to happen to your loved one something is going to happen to you when you announce the good news of the kingdom of God he rules and he reigns forever hallelujah hallelujah in more than one situation the Bible tells me that Jesus healed all that were sick hallelujah more than one situation in the gospel it tells us it tells us that it is the will of God that you be healed the doctors may say there's no cure hallelujah but I want you to know that if Jesus moves into your situation there is a cure for your situation hallelujah hallelujah I believe God that it is even as he said God can do what he said he's alive forevermore and as he announced this kingdom he wanted his disciples to witness this power of the kingdom because he was about to turn them loose so that they could do the same thing he said the works that I do shall you do also and greater work than these because I go to my father God wants to do the same thing today he's able to do it are you willing are you ready to be released by the power of God are you willing to change your situation are you willing to go into another city and change your things because of pronouncing the good news of the kingdom of God I remember there's one called Philip hallelujah he started out as a deacon but he was promoted to an evangelist and, and Philip hallelujah being full of the Holy Ghost somebody say full of the Holy Ghost and as he hallelujah was released by the holy ghost um, he went forth uh, down into samaria hallelujah where they were not half jews and what they call half breed those that were rejected by the jews um, and sometimes people can feel rejected and feel like god won't visit you but he went down to samaria and he began to preach christ and as he preached christ uh, something began to happen he preached christ to the cities and as he preached christ to the cities uh, the bible says uh, the demons were cast out the lame began to walk the he, he began to heal and he said he brought great joy to that city and I'm, God will do the same thing he wants to bring joy to the city of Norfolk he want to bring joy to the city of Portsmouth he want to bring joy to the city of Suffolk Virginia Beach Isle of Wight and Smithfield hallelujah he wants to bring joy to the cities I want to know are you willing today to let God use you as a vessel to bring forth the power of God God is alive he's ready to work miracles like never before he said I am the Lord and I change not God wants to do it for somebody today you'll never leave you nor will he forsake you the kingdom the rule and reign of God 
Too much has been said about the adversary. Sometimes the devil is painted so big. So people begin to be afraid of the devil. Hallelujah. But I am announcing the good news of God. Hallelujah. The mighty Savior. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When he come on the scene, chains begin to break. And when he come on the scene, sickness are going to be healed. And even as I'm pronouncing and announcing this gospel, your spirit man is being affected. Some healing is taking place because I'm announcing the good news of God. Hallelujah. God is alive. God is real. And he loves us so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to say with me, the kingdom of God has come to destroy the works of the devil. Come on, give God some praise in the house. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus walked to a coffin. Hallelujah. And where the widow was crying, because their only support and help, the young man had died. Jesus told them that was carrying the coffin, said, stop. Hallelujah. He looked at the woman that was suffering. Hallelujah. And then he said, young man, I say unto you, arise. Hallelujah. 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 I don't care where that young man's spirit was when Jesus spoke. Hallelujah. That spirit man had to come back to that body. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, you remember Jesus when he was talking to Mary and Martha. Martha said, uh, one of them said, Lord, I tell you, if you had just, if you'd just been there, if you had just come, you're late. And because you're late, nothing could happen. But if you had just been here, I know something would have happened. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, your brother's going to rise again. <clears throat> so, Lord, I know, I know he's going to rise in that day. I know he's going to rise in that special day. I know he's going to rise up in the resurrection. And, you know, they were looking for a special day. But Jesus told her something that will blow her mind. He said, I am the resurrection. So